termites. My God. Welcome to episode 79. Isn't that crazy? crazy? It is crazy. It's a lot. Well, what are we drinking? Well, no, first of all. The incoming news. The incoming news. I have reordered the black long sleeve pub cashers because I felt bad a lot. They, I didn't think they'd sell that quickly, but they did. So I've reordered them, but I swear to God, that's the last batch. And then this one, here's your St. Patrick's one. <laughs> it says thirsty termite. And then on the back, it says that it's, we put the orange on it. It's mm-hmm. in the spirit of unification. Nice. If you're an Irish Catholic, you would know what that meant. Mm-hmm. If not, don't worry about it. Just <laughs> put it on and have a nice St. Patrick's Day. Um, or for really any time, it's a festive T-shirt. So these will be available on the website by the time you hear this. Mm-hmm. That is the goal. If it's not, there's just a glitch and it'll be soon. So let's get rid of that for the moment. Now, what are we drinking? This is delicious. My friend Sarah is from Minnesota, and I was at Sarah's house, and this is called Indeed Brewing Indeed Company Pistachio Cream Ale. She's from Nebraska. Oh, right, Nebraska. There's a cabin there, yeah, in Minnesota, which I would like to go to. I've never been up to the northern Midwest in the summer, like Wisconsin or Minnesota or... I'm always sweating my ass off in Missouri or further <laughs> south than that in the humidity going, God, it's so humid. Yeah, you know what you could do, Kathleen? Get in a car. Right. Go north. Fish. Yeah, my cousin Mary always went up there with her kids up to Wisconsin and stuff. And I don't know, my parents never took us up there. So maybe I need to get to Minnesota because this beer is from Minneapolis. Nice. I mean, I've been to Minnesota a million times, but I'm always working. And then I'm not near, you know, it's the land of 10,000 lakes. I've never seen one. I mean, I believe them. You gotta get I believe yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm ten thousand behind. Not even, not even one. I can't even say I'm nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine. Anyway, you get it. Um, that's what we're drinking, and I'm drinking out of my turtle's glass. This glass makes me laugh every time because, on the golf course, me and my brother always used to refer to the super old golfers uh, as turtles because they move so slowly. On the, but at least they're out there. I respect it. But we would jokingly go, "Oh shit." Super super turtles ahead of us. Yeah, super turtles are like over eighty five. Oh wow! No, they're out there. There's ninety year olds. It's just like golf's great. You can play your whole life. But then my mom and dad were like, "Oh well, let's go to our favorite restaurant. It's in Seattle. Well, it's uh, on Little Sarasota Bay, and it's actually called Turtles. (laughs) And we had to get there at like four, or there's going to be a forty five minute wait. Yeah, the turtles start shelling in at about 3 30 they march in a giant group and the rush is over by 7 30 so if you're a normal person you can just go at 7 45 and they've all gone home yeah because i said to my mom dad, we ate dinner like at four i'm like what are we gonna do now and my dad goes put on our pajamas and watch netflix it was like six o'clock i go oh okay i mean i could bleed into that lifestyle no problem if need be but i'm like jesus christ you guys are getting old. Um, so that's what we're drinking. What are we going to taste today? Well, look what Wendy's did. This is Kellogg's Wendy's Frosty Chocolate Cereal. Wow. Yeah, and I was intrigued because, um, it looks like Cocoa Puffs. Uh-huh. There's little round chocolate balls. Good. Basically, Cocoa Puffs are better. Really? Yeah. Basically, they stole Count Chocula because <laughs> there's marshmallows in here, too. I've never had a Frosty at Wendy's, so I can't tell you if it tastes like a no. Frosty. Oh. I don't know. It's good. I mean, the kids would, lo- I would love it if it wasn't 7 million calories, but yeah, maybe you like a Frosty. I don't know. I just can't believe you could just rip off Count Chocula. <laughs> you just make it a different shape and go, it's ours? Don't they make Count Chocula? Kellogg's? Maybe. They yeah. probably do. Probably. Yeah, I don't know. But that's available for all you Wendy's freaks out there, right? <laughs> Get yourself some. Count Chocula. I don't. I never believe in messing with the original. Cocoa Puffs are great. Yeah. Count Chocula, great. great. If this is the same company, you didn't need to do that. No. But maybe they. I don't know. All my nephews eat a cinnamon toast crunch. Yeah. Like, Gross. yeah. I mean, it's like crack to kids. What are we eating? Well, have you ever heard of blue po- blue point blue plate mayonnaise? No. Neither had I. But the old lady at the grocery store told me it's the best, and it's very hard to find. And then I'm try. I tried to read where it's. Um, Where's it from? It's from Louisiana. What? It's from New Orleans. Riley Food Companies. Mm-hmm. Oh. 
How have I never heard of this? I can't believe there are this many mayonnaises in my whole life that just, this has been quality since 1927, says, so says the bottle. Well, let's see. Real mayonnaise. Right. Wow. Duke's is better. Really? Very good. Oh. This is great, though. I'd get... God, I could just eat this right out of the jar. So, I, can, I mean... I don't know. Duke's has a little tang in it that I like. Yeah. This is, like, real well, thick. It says that on there. What well, says it on the bottle, too? Real. It's good. I like a A+. Plus. I'd say it ties with Duke's. And then... I hate cilantro, uh -huh. and I hate chipotle. Oh. So, oh. Tessa Mays Buffalo Ranch. Uh -huh. See, now this in the grocery store, the label alone caught my eye. Yeah, it's also like $800. It is expensive, yeah. I know. But that's why I'm doing the work of the Lord. I'm eating all these costs, literally and figuratively. Right. Oh, my God. <laughs> no. Too much going on there. What does it taste like? It's, um... I've never seen you wave it away. Wow, it's, it's, um, uh, super boy -oy 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 -oy. I don't know. It doesn't taste like Buffalo Ranch. Buffalo wings don't taste like this. I don't know what you would say it? or do with that. Okay. But, you know, nice effort, I, I guess. No. Oh, my God. Let's put that over the way, out of the way. And then, Wow. So there you go. If you're at Blue Point, congratulations, Louisiana. I want to go to New Orleans again. I haven't been there in so long. Although I think I got COVID there before COVID was even, quote, in the United States. Really? Yeah. Okay. I went with my friend Vic. We had a show somewhere in the middle of nowhere, Louisiana. So we just hubbed in and out of, um, uh, out of New Orleans, out of the French Quarter. And I got so sick, I couldn't even leave on the day to leave. I've never been that sick really? where I was like, I literally cannot get up and go to an airport. It's not happening. Yeah. And in retrospect, it was like December of 2019. Yeah. And I think COVID was here then. And nobody told us or nobody knew. Nobody knew I don't think it was a big asserted effort. This came termite Jen. Make sure I'm yes. Jen. I don't know where she got this, but look, it's the tiny Loch Ness monster. Yeah, it's. I had. I bought the big one for my nephews. Mm -hmm. It's pieces. When you go to Scotland, there's his head, and then here's his back. <laughs> wow, that's cute. They sell them in the gift shops, but this one is a tiny one. I love it. It's gonna stay right here on the desk. Thank you, Jen Termite, Jen from Broomfield, Colorado. She, um, yeah, she's coming to Denver. Won't that be fun? That'd be great. Yeah. Denver, I never get to work in Denver in the summertime. Well, it's not really, I mean, June 4th, but because the people are so excited, they, they don't want to come inside and go to shows, but I think in June they will. There we go. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, see? Okay. The termites are weird. I get some weird stuff from termites, yeah. but I like it all. It's cool. I mean, it's, it's obscure. Somebody sent me this hat, which is adorable, and I lost the card. Oh. So if whatever termite... Got my initials on this hat. Well done. If I was only a Raiders fan, right? <laughs> Little silver, black. And then they sent a T-shirt acknowledging that, too. It says, do you have any ranch? Kathleen Madigan. Again, why am I not a Raiders fan? True. Pfft, yeah. Everything would match. And then this last item, before we get into it, we talk about the war in Ukraine. We talk about that the president of Ukraine used to be a comedian. And he's a badass. He is a badass, and so is Miss Ukraine. You know how you Miss Missouri yeah. or Miss whatever? She's Miss, which I guess would be Miss USA. She's a beautiful young lady, and she is out there with a flipping AK-47 wrapped around her shoulder and these crazy goggles. She's ready to kill some people. <laughs> it's amazing. All of them. It's a, they are not like giving down, backing down. I mean, it. you know, I don't know. I think a lot of nations would fold. If you knew the great evil Putin was coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Canada, would rise up. Canada has risen up and said they're not selling Russian vodka. See? Yeah. Awesome. 
Canada has done their part. The United States should think about that. And then I looked up which ones are ru- Russian. I mean, Smirnov is a Russian name, but the ones that are really Russian, I can't even pronounce them. Right. I can't read the writing. Stoli. Is Stoli a Russian product still, yeah. though? Stolichnaya? I don't know. This is from Heather, Shan, and Henry. Um, sent some recommendations for Augusta, Georgia, which I will be taking in the hand when I go down there for a pra- for the Tuesday practice deal. There's another termite coming too. Maybe we'll run into each other. So guy, there's a guy on Twitter. He's a termite, and he's gonna be there too. I said I'm only there on Tuesday. I don't go to the real you, rounds. You have a show there too. Oh right, I have a show in Augusta. See, this is why I need to retire. Oh my God. That is not the first thing on my mind. The first thing on my mind really is the whiskey bar and kitchen, the Savannah River Brewery, and then the Augusta Museum of History. It's got some James Brown outfits in it. I'm going. James Brown is from Augusta. A lot of people don't know that. Do, and, a, do a termite meet and greet. So there's only 19 people coming to the show. <laughs> no kidding. I got to sell some more tickets at Augusta. But I'm doing Atlanta. Yeah. So well, the Atlanta people aren't going to drive to Augusta. They just go to Atlanta. Believe. Bigfoot socks. Love it. Cool. And then some jelly. But it's watermelon jelly. I'm going to taste it. But I'm going to say this is more of a Vicky Madigan uh box it up item the st louis show is coming up um (laughs) my mom called in a panic she's like i know you called and said did we need any more tickets and i said no and i think it's past the deadline and i have knots in my stomach i go what do you want (laughs) i forgot that i promised my brother mark to, oh, my God. I go, Mom, I made a whole second round of phone calls. Yep. Nailing this down. This is last call. But they still, the guy was sweet enough. He yanked two back. But that is sold out, oversold out. So that's what I want to say to my turtle parents. These shows that are sold out, you cannot be slacking on. I don't know. Can we look? Can, right. Because people want to buy the tickets. Anywho. Um, all right. Well, that Blue Point mayonnaise is really good, man. I wish I had a sandwich to put it on right now. There we go. All right. <laughs> this is crazy. We're starting with some Queen news. Yeah. Queen Stevie. Oh, what's my fire? What's wrong with my fire? There we go. Queen Stevie. <laughs> she did a big interview with the New Yorker, I think. Um, it was one of the ones where I'm supposed to pay to read it, and I won't. <laughs> No, I won't do it because I know I'll find it somewhere else. And it's not that I don't want to pay, pay you a dollar or whatever. It's I don't feel like doing it right at that minute. Here, put credit card number and all this or shit, you know, just to read a CV article. So I found it someplace else, the part I wanted anyway. Um, This is what's, wait, let me make sure. Oh, I got it backwards. This is what Stevie's advice is to do when you're depressed. Don't you want to know? I want to know what she says. (laughs) One, two, hold on. I don't know how somebody must have fucked with my papers. God damn it. I don't touch your papers. <laughs> don't look at me. Somebody's doing it. Nope. All right. Nobody does it. Uh, over the course of her years in public, Stevie Dix has recommended a, n- a number of other, other artistic projects to her fans. While she often speaks out about other musicians, she's also shared the way of books, films, television have impacted her life. Recently, she described the film that she considers the best way out of difficult periods of her life. Okay. Okay. If I had to say one that would, if I was depressed, I'd always rewatch Arthur. Because it makes me laugh. Or any Jaws. All of the Jawses. All of them. Because I just, the whole thing is just ridiculous and awesome. Anyway, I mean, that's the old school recommendation. Uh she loves the Twilight books. We all know that. Um, if it hadn't been for those movies, she told this reporter, uh, if it hadn't been for your movies, I'd have made two records. I've, I've since made two records. I would have never made those albums because I was so staunch in my belief that it was over. Oh. oh. Okay. okay. I've not seen any Twilight things. None of them. Is it vampires? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Children? For the children? Yeah. Are they like 20-somethings? Well, they are now. Well, was it for teenagers? Oh, yeah. Come on, yeah. Battles. Get with it. Yeah. Well, I don't know where you're at. Articulate. 
children. Yeah. Anybody at this point. Speaking Anybody, of speaking of the children, any girls, I call any cart girl at the golf course under the age of 30, Taylor. <laughs> because I've met like three of them, and then there's a couple that aren't named Taylor, but I'm like, is it okay if I just call you Taylor? Because I'm not going to remember, and then it's going to be something more fucked up. And now they all just laugh and play along. They're like, hi, Kathleen, it's me, Taylor. <laughs> like, how are you doing, Taylor? Um, uh, this is what Stevie loves to watch when she goes through what she refers to as the Nick's crazies. Um, like Nick's crazies. She likes to put on the 2016 animated film Storks. It's helped her through difficult times. Do something that really makes you happy, she told the New Yorker. Or go out and get some great movies you've always wanted to see, like Storks. And then she laughs. It's my favorite movie. I've watched it six times. It's just so great. It's the sweetest movie ever, she explained. It's about storks going out of business, and they become like FedEx, and they only deliver packages, no more babies. And then they accidentally push the wrong button and one baby comes through. That's where the li- that's the little star of the whole movie. The storks are her only friends. You have to buy this movie and you have to replay it at all times. It's a cartoon, but it's a massive movie of life and love and sadness and tragedy. That's my answer to depression. Storks. <laughs> no, well, now I want to see it. I'm not a big animated person. It's not really my thing. But that's if Stevie swears it's good, maybe I can push my thing aside. I had to watch Inside Out because Lewis was in it. Um, that is a great story, too, because Lewis Black, the comedian, plays the character Anger in that movie, uh, Inside Out, Pixar animated thing. And he, when I was out in L.A. for whatever reason, he came out and he's like, will you go to the premiere with me? And I'm like, no, I don't even want to see your movie, Lou. I don't like animation. And he's like, come on, I don't have anybody to go. So I'm like, fine. I will go, and uh, another friend of his went, and they had a purple carpet instead of a red carpet because all kids were invited, which was great. The, there's little kids, and, like, there was this little tiny Mexican kid, and he loved anger, mm-hmm. like, way too much, though. I'm like, what is this kid? He's like, there he is! When he saw <laughs> Lou, he started flipping the fuck out. He was like, it's anger! It's him! And he's pointing on his phone. He knows Lewis's picture. I'm like, oh, my God, how does that little kid know who Lou like is? Right, right. <laughs> Lou's 70, and this kid's like seven. And he's like, ah! And he's like, sign it! And Lou's like, oh, shit, this kid took it too seriously. But then it was like 150 degrees in L.A. that day. And he had on a suit, a sport jacket, because he had to look nice on the thing. And I saw, way at the end of the purple carpet, a bar. Uh And I ditched him. (laughs) Well, he has to stay in there and take pictures, and I don't. I'll still go with you, but they don't even, they don't want me in the picture. Fucking, they don't want to be in the picture. And then these children are going batshit, and I just kept going, he'll come. Don't worry, he's coming. He'll do it. <laughs> and he did do it. He did it for everything. So that's a sidetrack, but um, Queen Stevie says, Steve, watch Storks. And now I'm going to have to watch it. Speaking of children, do you want to address the Nikki Haley comment? Oh, the children. <laughs> Some lady on something, I don't know, gave me a uh, one star. It could, have, it could have been a dude. I don't know. I didn't really pay attention. But one star because I got, quote, political. <laughs> Missing the whole point. The point wasn't Nikki Haley. The point is the children. Right. That they don't do what you think they should do if you are over the age of, say, 45. Right. They're not, and there's part of that rebellious spirit that I like, and then part of me as an old person that goes, God damn it, could you just act right just once? <laughs> and they, they just are like, no. I mean, the, but that person, people are so sensitive. I wasn't, Nikki Haley is a representative of me and everybody else right. over the age of 45 right. that sometimes looks at the children and goes, would you act right? Would you be an American for Christ's sake? Why are you out there? skating around and flying around on a snowboard for a communist nation that treats its people like shit. Everybody knows that. The point is the children. It was the point. Right. So that I'm like, I've read her thing. And I, or I, I don't know. It could have been a man. I have no, I didn't really look. I don't really even look for stuff like that. But I had to go on for some reason oh, to see how many downloads this has had for some reason. Something on serious. I don't radio. I don't know. I don't know anything. That's the point. Update! Woo-hoo. Update! Brittany! 
Britney Spears. She's going to get a big, big windfall. Back in January, she accused her estranged sister, Jamie Lynn, of selling a book at her expense. She was never around me much in 15 years, so I don't even know why we're talking about that, unless she wants to sell a book at my expense. Blah, 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 blah. According to Variety, the book, she, they're going to give uh, Britney a book deal. It will feature Spears' account of her chart-topping career, her private life, and her fractured relationship with her family. I mean, the whole family's on the rocks. Right. The dad, the mom. Does she have a brother? Yeah. Is he? He took the dad's side. Oh, no. He took the dad's yeah, side? Like when she was a kid. Oh. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, Paddles. I can't keep up with the I mean, life and times of Britney Spears. <laughs> <laughs> this is important. This is important to, yeah. I think his name's Brian. Um, she's set to earn $15 million in the process. <laughs> well, was he a little kid? Did he have to? No. I mean, you can't be a parent, parent yourself if you're like eight. Oh, he took the money? Yeah. yeah. Well, oh. not the money, but he's a big nightclub guy. All right. Mm-hmm. It, this deal is one of the biggest book deals of all time behind the Obamas. The Obamas reportedly oh. netted $60 million from a deal. You know, I never buy any ex-president's book. They all seem boring. I don't care. He, uh, like, I wouldn't pay the Obamas $60 million, but somebody must be buying them. But I, I buy books. I'm still old enough where I actually buy books. I had a Kindle for like an hour and a half, and I was like, this sucks. It's not like having a book right. at all. I mean, I know the children probably Brian work. Brian Spears. What? Brian Spears. Brian Spears? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, he's uh, 44. He, he, he says he's an American television producer. He, uh, he's an American television producer? What does he produce? Nothing. Nothing. He okay, gave great. some credits. Um. So the Obamas netted sixty million from a Penguin Random House for the rights to their individual memoirs. It doesn't even matter that it's the Obamas. There's nobody in politics that I'd want to read their whole thing, and except if she was honest, I would have read Betty Ford's because she was hammered the whole time she was in the White House. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's a apparently there's a Barbara Walters. Uh, interview that's out there somewhere Mm -hmm. and betty is just shit faced it it never made it to air but it's a rumor and then somehow one time digging deep i found a miniature clip Mm -hmm. i'd read betty she probably has written a book for all i know but otherwise presidential stuff i don't know it just seems boring right anyway that britney's got a quick 15 mil coming in it's pretty exciting (laughs) good for her that's what I say, as Rocky Laporte, fine comedian from Chicago, would say, go for you. Rocky, I killed my parents and then their trunk of my car. Go for you, cat. Go for you. What do you want to do with them? <laughs> okay. Um, this is an update. I'm not sure you're going to be happy to hear, but I am. For those of you who saw Bothering Jesus on Netflix, my special, and then there's a different one. Somebody asked where the rest of them are. Check Amazon. I don't even know. I'll put the show notes. Like, whatever. They're everywhere. They're, they get moved around. People lease them, and then they get moved and released. And I will provide a break um, in the show notes. The next special, the one that is being filmed in June, will be for an Amazon original. Yeah. hmm We've only had to move it 18 times. <laughs> I know. Um, so there's a guy. He's an expert. This is an update on flight 370. Malaysian, the Malaysian flight. And if you watch my special bothering Jesus, it's the longest um, joke I've ever done in my life. It's not really a joke. It's my feelings on the situation of this missing airplane. And it's, but it's the longest time I've ever stayed on one topic. And I was totally aware of it. And I'm also thinking, I'm not sure people care this much as I do, but I just kept going and I wanted it filmed for the record that I cannot believe in the whatever year that was, 2016, that we can just lose a plane. I I can't even get started on this subject. It's like getting started on Stan Kroenke because I'll go crazy. I'll go crazy. Um, but this guy, um, he's a super duper duper smart person. I'm going to tell you what's happening. A 22-minute maneuver could prove the doomed MH370 flight was actually a murder-suicide plot by one of the pilots, a top Australian pilot, has claimed. On 2008, uh, 2014, oh, I thought it was 16, 
the Malaysian Airlines disappeared. We know that. Um, you know what? I should read this one first. Okay. But it's it's terrifying. Okay. I mean, you don't. Yeah. You gotta hope. You really. This guy, because at least we need to say who's saying this. A retired aerospace engineer. He's also a physicist, I believe. Believes he uncovered the whereabouts of Malaysian Flight 370, the passenger aircraft from Malaysia that disappeared nearly eight years ago after conducting an unofficial investigation. His findings have led to the Australian Transport Safety and uh, to order a, re, a re, uh, review of a new search, mm-hmm. which I think they should. Yes. What do I got to do? Get a go, Do a GoFundMe? I mean, I know it's a lot of money. I don't think I can raise that much money. <clears throat> um, the global effort failed. We all know that. The four-year search, which eventually became known as the most expensive aviation search, for its $200 million we yielded no wreckage. We know, know this. This guy said, um, according to retired British aerospace engineer and physicist Richard Godfrey, the Flight 370 could have fallen into the ocean about 1,200 miles west of Perth, oh. Australia. Yeah, and some 13,000 feet under the water in an area known as the Seventh Arc. He determined that the plane's purported final destination by using weak signal propagation reporter analysis to monitor radio frequency disturbances to the plane created around the world. Apparently, this has something to do with ham radios. I don't understand it. As soon as, This man is so smart. As soon as he starts talking, I'm like, like, but I believe him. He pointed out the irregular patterns of the aircraft made throughout its journey, such as such as the 360-degree turn it made over the ocean. And we're going to get to this, but he thinks the thing, he was on 60 Minutes Australia. A lot of termites sent this to me. I haven't seen the program. I've seen the one part of the interview. Um, everyone has assumed up until now there was a straight path, perhaps even on autopilot. I've heard that one a lot, that, that it was just flying yeah. till it ran out of gas and then wonka wonka. He says, I believe there was an active pilot for the whole flight. It also did a holding pattern maneuver where somebody somebody said the one pilot was really pissed off about some politician that they had ousted or something and that he may have even been talking to the Malaysian government like you need to do A, B, and C or I'm going to take this plane down. But why would you be flying around in a circle unless he couldn't decide? Do I want to really go down in flames here? But then what's the co-pilot doing? Is he locked in the bathroom? Right. I mean... Gottfried said such aircraft behavior shows that the pilot Zahiri Sa appears to have been appears to have caused the plane to go off course, deliberately supporting a theory about the pilot's alleged involvement in the crash. He revealed that the plane displayed an unusually ho- hold, unusual holding pattern for around 20 minutes, about three hours into the flight. Here's the other thing. Mm-hmm. Now I'm a really good sleeper, pretty much anywhere. Mm-hmm. I can fall asleep anywhere, but unless you were asleep on that plane. You would notice, yeah. hey, why are we going around in circles over the ocean? That would have scared the living shit out of me. Mm-hmm. And he ain't saying nothing right. that we know of. Um, a pilot typically keeps the plane in the holding pattern w- within specified airspace, which happens when an aircraft is waiting for per- per- permission to leave or get ready before a landing. Yes, because when you're in one, a holding pattern, waiting to land, you notice we are going in a circle. I would not have wanted Ben to awake. No, thank you. He may have simply wanted time to make up his mind where he would go from here, he told 60 Minutes. I hoped if there was any contact with Malaysian authorities that after eight years now they'd be willing to divulge that. No, they will not. No. Then he showed 160 points pinned on a map where radio frequencies signal over the Indian Ocean were purportedly disturbed by it. In his statement, um... They wrote that Gottfried is a credible expert on this subject and it had ordered Geoscience Australia to review its search data to revalidate that no items of interest were detected in the search area recommended by Gottfried. So, uh, this guy, when you see the one clip of him, he also has no dog in this fight, which makes him more believable to me. Mm -hmm. He doesn't care. And I feel bad for those families if they took the money. Because once you take the money, there's no going back from that. Um... Uh, I was going to hold on. There's something in this one I had about who he's pissed off at. But he also, I think, was recently divorced. I'm saying that without knowing that for sure, but I think so. I'll find it later. Okay. But that's an update. There's, a, there's one man out there. It's a big update. 
This little chubby guy with glasses, he cares. He cares more than I do, more than, which is hard to do because I couldn't believe it. Every day I woke up for months going, did they find the plane? Let me turn on CNN. Did, and then finally, for like weeks, they would go, well, day 35, no missing, no airplane. And then finally, even CNN gave up. Wow. Everybody gave up. Yeah. I'm like, we're all just going to fold? Right. They were like, when you get on an airplane, they tell you what to do in case of an emergency. They, it, it's never been brought up. We might go missing. Right. What the fuck? What do you mean? How did nobody's phones work at all? Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's just an update. Um, this is an update just because personal, personal highway here. I'm obsessed with Pompeii. And I know it's not going to be hard. It's not going to be boring. It's going to be very fast paddles. No, they did not find anyone else vaporized, but the city's getting um, a whole rebirth because they got a shit ton of money from the EU to fix it. Yeah. Yeah. Evacuations under, uh, excavations undertaking as part of an engineering stabilization strategies to prevent new collapses are yielding a raft of revelations about the everyday lives of Pompeii's residents as the lens of social class analysis is increasingly applied to new discoveries. See? Great. You're fine. That didn't hurt. No. Yeah, they're get, they're getting they got a, uh, they have an infusion of 120 million euros, which is 120 million dollars in. Um, so what they're doing is they're getting ready, they're getting it ready for me to come. <laughs> That's what I've decided. Yeah. We call this the Kathleen Grant. Yes. <laughs> That's wonderful, though. This is what the EU should be doing with some money. They gave Ireland a bunch, and you could tell where the money ran out because the road gets shitty again. All of a sudden, you'll be on our road, and you're like, wow, this is a fancy highway. And then it goes right back to the, yeah. the, the money that isn't going to last forever, right? Well, that's good news, though. Roundabout. <laughs> yeah. Roundabouts. God, they put one in, in the middle of Missouri, and they had to have four newspaper articles explaining to the old turtles how to get through a roundabout. It was just caused mass chaos. <laughs> It's a t- it's a small city. You don't need to, you don't need a goddamn roundabout. They were fine with four stop signs. Totally. Fine. <laughs> and now you've got. I mean, if you put my mom in a in a serious roundabout, like one in Paris or a big one, uh-huh. she'd never get out <laughs> ever. She, she until she ran out of gas. That car would still keep going around in circles because she'd be like, "I want to get now." And then, oh my Jack, god, Jack, 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 don't go now, don't go now. Everything's always so. Wow. <laughs> Even when my mom calls, it sounds like she's fallen down a well. This is like Kathleen. <laughs> I'm like, where did you? Are you baby Jessica? Are you in a well? Should I come down there? What are you doing? Um, holy shit! They found it. A termite sent me this, and I happened to see it right at the same time. This is flipping awesome. Archaeologists working on a site in Southwark Street, wherever that is. It's in London have uncovered the largest area of Roman mosaic to be discovered in London for a half a century. Um, I know. The tile is amazing. The mosaic floor thought to date from A.D. 125 through 225. They believed it formed part of a dining room. This is a -a once-in-a-lifetime find. We'll put it in the show notes. You have to see the pictures. It's perfect. Like, I, this is why I'm not an archaeologist, but you got to dig around that whole thing and remove that in one piece. I don't know how you do that. Yeah, Yeah, it's been a privilege to work on such a large site where Roman archaeology is largely undisturbed by later activity, where the first flashes of color started to emerge through the soil. Everyone was very excited. The discovery made last month on the plot of transport for London-owned land at the junction Southwark and Red Red Cross Way, previously known as whatever, whatever. Um, They're digging it up for the... um, the, under, the underground to extend it, I think. Yeah, the site was always known to have a high potential for archaeological discoveries. The remains of high-status Roman buildings, uh, of a high-status Roman building were discovered on the eastern side of the site in 18, 1981, and further digs were carried out during the Jubilee works. Mm-hmm. Oh, the Jubilee line. Jubilee. In the 90s, the mosaic will be recorded and assessed by an expert team of conservators. They will then, it will then be lifted and transported off-site, enabling a more detailed conservation to t- work to take place. That is just fantastic. Where do you see it? That's great. Yeah. You're like, God, damn. and look, it's just, it doesn't even look like archaeologists. It looks like two dudes that would work on the 
construction of the underground. I bet they, as soon as they took that mud back, they were like, what the hell? This is crazy. Holy shit, they found it. This is crazy. Oh, my God. Exceedingly rare fossil of a giant flying reptile discovered on Scottish Island. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Wing reptile, winged reptiles known as... Try it. No, I can't read it. You can. Try it. Pterosaurs. Air, Airplane-sized creatures that swoop through the skies as dinosaurs walk the earth were the first um, animals to evolve powered flight. Whoa. Whoa. Mm-hmm. As big as an airplane. Really? I mean, think about that. That's why when the, when the um, Mexican drug lord cats appeared, the kittens appeared mm-hmm. under my air conditioning unit, when they would come out, when I could get them out, mm-hmm trick them out like a hawk would fly over and instinctively they heard it they looked up and they ran back underground but to them that hawk size proportionately would be like me seeing this giant flying reptile going holy shit (laughs) i gotta get in the basement a spectacular three-dimensional fossil of one previously unknown i'm just gonna call it a pterosaur has been discovered on the shore of the isle of sky it's off the west coast of Scotland. Cool. It had a wingspan of more than eight and a half feet. Mm-hmm. It's the biggest one ever discovered from the Jurassic period and last flapped its wings 170 million years ago. It's sharp teeth, which would have snapped up fish. We well, could have gotten a lot more than fish. Yeah. Still retain their shiny enamel. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. That's cool. They're so rare, they're exceedingly rare, and are, uh, are usually reserved to select rock formations in Brazil and China. So it's weird to find one in Scotland. And yet an enormous, uh, superbly preserved petrosar emerged from a tidal platform in Scotland. And then this lady was the leading one. The fossil was discovered, well, this is a different one, though. You've got to see the picture of this. I mean, it's just crazy. And then some people are just walking on a beach. I can't even imagine. I never find anything like this. Like... I, well, sand dollars, or what I did learn in California is after storm, you find tons of um, little he-men and toys, whatever, kids flush down toilets, and then that water grosses everybody out, but nobody pays attention. It goes three miles out, and it all comes back in. Anything that was in a sewer or a toilet, uh, tennis balls, softballs, toys, nothing of value, nothing of interest, just junk. And then you're like, wow, I'm swimming out there. Yeah. I'm literally swimming in shit. Close your mouth. <laughs> oh, it's gross. Oh, gross. <laughs> All right. We're moving on to news. Oh. Let me see what's going on here. All right. We're moving on to news. Kmart becomes another victim of retail apocalypse. The once popular discount chain that rival Walmart and Target dwindles to just four surviving Kmarts. There's Experts still, say it's... Still Kmart? Four. Wow. Do you want to know where they're at? Yeah. I'm going to tell yeah. you. What I can tell it? you they're not by any place I'm around. Okay. Um, God, we would get so excited as kids to go to Kmart. What? Oh. Wow. Fuck yeah. Because my mom couldn't pay attention to all of Nobody us. Has ever said that. We could just run wild in Kmart. They had so much cool stuff. Like back in the day, as a kid, it was a big outing. I don't know. It was <laughs> once, but it once yeah. they had 2,000 stores throughout the United States. True. Now they're down to four. Four. Yep. Two are in New Jersey. It doesn't specify where. Wow. One is um, in Lo- on Long Island okay. and New York, and one in Miami, Florida. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's become the latest one. Um, the announcement came after decades of the discount retail, retail chain failing to keep up with Walmart and Target's low, sp- low prices. That's the problem. Walmart came. Oh, that's and Target true. was a little upstart. Yep. Um, the problem that was only uh, exacerbated by the pandemic, they tried to change, but they didn't. They never changed their image. They didn't even try with signage. No. There was a Kmart. So when I had to live out in L.A. for work, there was um, a Kmart, like, 
I don't know, 15 minutes from my house. And I went one time for whatever reason. There was something I wanted at Kmart. That and This was like 15 years ago. It looked as if it had been looted. And there was, there, like, nothing made sense. Like, you'd be walking down the diaper aisle, and there was a basketball. Right. Like, there was just shit everywhere. It was like nobody worked there. And I thought, wow, like, I guess it had been so long since I've been into one. They filed bankruptcy way back. Um, Target's stock price, meanwhile, was 194 bucks a share on Wednesday, and Walmart's was at 136 So that's how Kmart died because of that. Because my mom didn't get there, get us there enough to spend all our money. Mm-hmm. It was found by Sebastian Spearing Cressage. Yep, in 1889 in the Detroit suburb of Garden City, a di- as a dime store where shoppers could find daily um, needs such as houseware and clothes. And then the famous blue light special, mm-hmm. which the children probably don't know about, but they'd turn on a blue oh, light. Yeah. And then make an announcement like, basketballs are $7 off right now. Boom! And then everybody had to run and go get them if you wanted a basketball. Yeah, a blue light special or daily D's, it deals in specific departments and rush to see what they what they were before enjoying a meal in the cafe. I do not remember K- Kmart having a cafe. No, neither. Only Ikea has a cafe. Mm-hmm. And those Swedish meatballs are to die for. And their ice cream is great. Yes, sure. That's a little travel tip. Travel tip. <laughs> So that's sad. So maybe if you're in um, the, one of those four places, you could go there for nostalgia's sake. I would. Four left. Wow. But they're <laughs> so, they got so junky. Very and Target is fancy, like compared to Kmart. A lot of polyester. Walmart depresses me. I mean, I'm, I try not to go in there. I try not to support it. But some things, I can only find them at Walmart. Not often. Maybe twice a year. Okay. But the lighting is bad. The whole the whole thing, everybody in there looks sad. <laughs> I mean, not that they have to look happy, but there's just a vibe in there that's, yeah. 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 We're moving on to more news. Okay. A 16-year-old from India has beaten world chess champion Magnus Carlsen. <gasps> <gasps> what was the movie? Um, Queen's Gambit. Queen's Gambit, yeah. Mm-hmm. If you're a chess person, he's so cute, this little kid, too. At just 16 years old, all right, I'm going to try this. My gosh. Ramishish Babu Prag Nana and Ha. <laughs> Look at how many letters this is P R A G G N A N A A H A A. He's the youngest chess player ever to defeat Magnus Carlsen in his long reign as world champs. <laughs> The two fa- faced off in an online tournament that had featured uh, 16 elite players. Yeah. He's simply referred to as Prague. Thank you. Right. I mean, it's Jerry's just... <laughs> he's a grandmaster from India. He's the chess prodigy said after the game, he was glad to improve his play from the tournament's first day and to avoid a draw in, a, to avoid a draw in his game with Carlson, which included 39 moves. He beat him in 39 moves. Oh, wow. I'm just really happy. He's the youngest person to defeat Carlson. Since he became a world champion, a streak that extends way back to 2013. Yep. For Carlson, it was a disappointing game in a tournament that has seen him make uncharacteristic blunders. The Norwegian said he's feeling the effects of COVID-19 after testing positive for the coronavirus before the tournament. It's been pretty bad. I played a couple of decent games, but the rest of them have been poor. I need to do a lot better. See, now if you're the kid, Prague, do you feel like you beat him for real? Or do you feel like he's sick? Well, no. I'd have to I wait till he was better and say, "Can I play you again?" I think he's lying you think Mag Magnus is lying? Yep. Well, no. like it's been a little better today, but the first couple of days I was feeling okay, but I didn't have the energy, which made it hard to focus because every time I tried to think, I blundered. It was a little bit better today, but still pretty bad. Um, before running into Prague, Carlson had notched three straight wins showing signs of returning to form after a rough start. In contrast, Prague was bouncing back from three straight losses. Yeah, there's your current update then. That's it. Prague is rocking and rolling. He's the new. He's, yeah, wait, he's his picture. He does not look 16. Show notes. He looks 13, and he's adorable. Good for you. See, some of the children are out there doing crazy awesome things. We're going to practice his name. I can't say his name. Just oh. stop. There's no way. <laughs> no, I can't. Um, we've got, we have a victim in... 
the Tahoe area, a victim of um, mistaken identity. His name is Hank the Tank. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if, this has actually made the real news. Like Usually I try to find the weird stories, but um, Hank the Tank is a 500-pound bear. Now, first of all, Lake Tahoe is beautiful. It is very strange, though. I've worked up there a million times. There's, like, the strip of all the casinos. And, like, one day I took a walk, just walking around. I was like, it was, there was no snow. It was, must have been fall. And I just found three dogs, like, what? out. Found them? Found them. And then I looked at their tags, and then I looked, I Googled their address on there, and they weren't close. I mean... I walked them back, but it was like, you know, a mile. <laughs> like, if anyone cares, here's your dachshund. Yeah, they're mad again. But I just kept coming upon stray dogs. That, I mean, not stray. Somebody owned them, but they were loose. Like, just walking down the street, like, hey, how are you doing? Anyway, I did not see a bear. Um, this bear, though, once again, if you haven't seen his picture, a 500-pound bear... I hate to say it, but he's the Ralphie May of all bears because oh. Ralphie's passed away. But uh, Hank has been blamed for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you about this. Okay. And it's not just Hank. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody should think about their accusatory nature just because he's a little heavier than most bears. He might have an eating problem. Yeah. I think he he's, does. He might be sad. Um, he's so he big. Totally you may know Hank. You may know, you may know him as Hank the Tank, but the California... Department of Fish and Wildlife knows him as a threat to a Lake Tahoe neighborhood. But here's the thing. Hank has lived in this neighborhood his whole life. The area. Okay. The, okay? So he's been, I mean, enough that they know him. It's like the boss, the grizzly in Canada. Oh, yeah. In Banff. Everybody knows the boss. Everybody does. And they have t-shirts in town. I bought one for Lewis. They didn't have one for, uh, no women's sizes or I'd be wearing it right now. Every day. And then they have sightings. But he leaves, he doesn't do anything. He leaves people alone. He's just out there. He's an enormous grizzly bear. <laughs> Hank's just your regular old um, bear. bear. Yeah, he's not a grizzly bear. In the span of seven months, the animal caused extensive damage at 33 properties. Whoa. Yeah, Hank's hungry. <laughs> <laughs> um, he has forcefully entered at least 28 homes. Can you imagine? Because now he knows, he's, he knows his weight has power. Mm -hmm. So if he wants to slam through a front door, you're just sitting there watching TV and a fucking 500-pound bear. Right there. You better hope you have <laughs> snacks. You better have you think of Blue Point. He would love that Blue Point mayonnaise. Here you go, Hank. Like, look, here's two crackers. Um, he's called... Okay, this is... I mean, he is breaking into everything. Two, uh, they believe Hank is responsible for two more break-ins last weekend. A Facebook post by the department says he broke through a small window and somehow squeezed, basically, his fat ass... Inside a house Friday when no one was there. He did not break into the garage, however, which was where the trash was kept. Officers banged on the exterior of the home until he left through the back door. And Saturday, he was believed to have broken down a front door to enter a home. Police said they haven't confirmed the bear is Hank, but they believe it is likely him. See? They're just deciding and accusing. This is why Hank needs an attorney. Because he's being, he's being accused of shit. You'll see. Maybe didn't Hank didn't do all these things. Oh, Maybe yeah. he probably did something. Yeah, I think he did. There have been no direct attacks on humans or pets in the area. He's not coming for you guys. No. He's not coming. He's coming for, for your pets. He wants your cheeseburgers. He wants your cheeseburgers. <laughs> and he wants your prime rib and your salmon. Residents have flooded the police with word calls. Yes, I'd be very worried too. And the wild the wildlife department said that more than a hundred individual reports of the bear have been come in have been coming into the South Lake. Tahoe Police, Wildlife Department, so-and-so said they've been tracking incidents with this black bear since the spring of 2021. See, COVID, too, they got ballsy. The animals, like yeah. weird animals coming in that wouldn't normally be quite as ballsy because there were no people around. True. And then they don't get their normal amount of trash. No. <laughs> no. You know what the Missouri bears love more than anything? What? Barbecue. Really? They love it. Yeah. Sure. In the Ozarks, there's a barbecue place up by the state park, and they come out of the state park, and they go, they wait for the trash at the barbecue to be the, I think they like the sugar. I mean, they like the oh, meat. Yeah. Anything you're throwing out of a barbecue, they, they're called, we call them, we call them the barbecue bears. If you want to see them, they're oh, usually back there. The and then I always feel sorry for, like, there's probably some 16-year-old that's like, do I have to take out the trash tonight? <laughs> um, the incidents primarily occurred during the summer and fall of 2021 when the bear was in 
uh, when the bear was in hyperphagia, adding to calories to survive the winter. Uh, he was stocking up. Uh, hyperphagia causes bears to eat and drink not nearly nonstop in the fall for preparation yes, for, for hibernation. hibernation. Right. The bear, according, has lost his fear of people and is associated with people to food. Yep. I can tell you that. <laughs> what has happened with these cats on this property? I am nothing but a treat machine. <laughs> you know, why don't you guys go act like cats and kill something? You're a Pez dispenser. I am a Pez dispenser <laughs> of temptations. That's what the cat treats are called. I'll tell you what, not having a cat, too. If you go down a cat aisle, there are a lot of people in cat aisles with a lot of opinions on what you should or should not be giving your goddamn cat. And I want to say to all these people who feel so... Strongly. They feel the need to tell me all this, and I want to go, you know what? These are not my cats! I said that I would get them through life. <laughs> Shit, I don't care. Most of my cats don't enjoy the salmon. What? Most of my yeah, I know. There's a lot of opinion. You don't get that shit in the dog aisle. You're a cat lady. Cat lady. I like cats. Mm. I like dogs probably better. Okay. But um, this bear uh, has lost its fair people. We did that. In October, California was mauled by a different black bear that broke into her northern Lake Tahoe home what? and rummaged through her kitchen. The woman, woman suffered scratches and other wounds all over her body. There are, a few op there are a few options to keep the community and the bear safe. Relocation, placing the bear in facility, or euthanasia. Now, a lot of people are saying there was. there's a lot of fighting about this online. Yeah. I didn't think about any of this stuff because I don't know enough about bears. But if they yeah. take him way, way far out, they're like, he won't be able to survive because no. he's used to trash dependent. and he's dependent on the people and the hoop to ha mm -hmm. But I also don't understand why you have to kill Hank. Why can't you just feed Hank? Oh, God, no, you can't do that. Feed a 500-pound grizzly bear? Every morning, just get in air, train him like I have trained these cats. Have you seen Tiger King? Yeah, I saw Tiger yeah. King. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I, I'm sure he's very dangerous, but how about a zoo? He'd become a celebrity now. He'll eat everything in the zoo. <laughs> the zoos have bears? <laughs> yeah. I mean, if he's this much of a problem, in order to not kill him... I think he'd be a local celebrity. Okay. Or you know what? Take him down to Florida where one of these Tiger King biz bizarre ass, totally seemingly illegal. I don't know. Maybe they're legal. You know, come look at our crazy critters for $7 and don't think I don't pull over. And then I think I shouldn't support this. No. And then I think, yeah, but I think there's a giant. Now, <laughs> if you told me Hank the Tank was, you know, over in the Sarasota weird thing, I'd go. But I guess you should. But at least he's alive. This is a hot topic. I know people are going to send hate mail. Please don't, <laughs> don't do not, do not send me anything about what or should not be done by this bear. But right now, but here's the other thing. Okay, so Hank was taking all the shit for this, right? Because right. Hank didn't have a lawyer. Because mm -hmm. Hank can't talk anyway. Even if he did have a lawyer, it would be my dad's dream client. Just shut up. It's not just Hank the Tank. It's a bear battalion, and it's turned out to be three bears. So every single accusatory person needs to issue an apology to Hank, perhaps in the form of a T-bone, <laughs> and say you're sorry because they took DNA uh -huh. from these break-ins, and it's not just Hank. I can't believe. I've never heard of a bear before. DNA evidence now shows that the 500-pound black bear nicknamed Hank the Tank is in fact at least three not so little bears who've damaged more than 30 properties around Tahoe in recent months. The state, I can't believe that they got the bear. I mean, I guess it wouldn't be hard to get his DNA. His, his hair is probably everywhere from breaking yeah, in. Saliva. Okay. Saliva, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the State Department <laughs> said it will soon begin trapping bears and tag the animals and collect evidence for genetic analysis. The bears will be released into a suitable habitat, and the agency said no trapped animals will be euthanized as part of the project. Great. This is the update on Hank. The bears are responsible for more than a... It's not funny. I know, especially if you're one of those people that have broken your house. 150 incidents. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. In the region, straddling Northern California and Nevada, including a break-in at a resident in the Tahoe Keys neighborhood last week. One of the Hanks. One of the Hanks. Now, see? <laughs> just because he's the fattest doesn't mean it's all his fault. Hank won. 
One of the Hanks smashed a window Friday and squeezed into the house while the residents were home. Oh, God. oh CBS Sacramento reported. That's the one where they banged on the house to get him out. Hank exited out the back door and, and, and disappeared into the woods. Wow. Nothing wrong with That's that. Ridiculous. Um, also known as Jake or Yogi or simply Big Guy, the then solo bear was what one wildlife official described as severely food habituated bear that has lost all fear of people and thinks of them as a food source. I know the feeling. What's problematic about this bear is how large it is. It's learned that he can use his size and strength to break into a number of occupied residents bursting through the door, through the garage door or the front door. Boy, I would be totally securing my front door. (laughs) I don't need to be sitting in the family room, and this is too much. Once the trapping efforts begin, the three Hanks, at least, may well form a brigade. (laughs) (laughs) See? That's just not right, though. Everybody yelling at Hank. (laughs) And the other, you know, the other two, at least the other two bears were like, (laughs) They think it's him because he's fat. <laughs> it's such bullshit. Okay. Well, that's I'm going to end on that one. But not no, not yet. Not yet. This this sounds like my idea of a nightmare. Uh, as far as where do you want to live? But I know like I have some friends who are adults that really are still into Disney. I can't say I understand that. Um, but they're always very nice people. Yeah. But they go to Disney world for fun. Like I went, well, a lot. Yeah. Yeah, They have the passes. Uh, we went as kids once my dad took seven of us in, in the station wagon and the whole way to Disney world. My dad told us what a piece of shit Walt Disney was. He was an (laughs) anti-Semite and he was, he sided with the fascist and I'm like, have fun kids. Yeah. Dad. (laughs) Um, just FYI, you're kind of ruining it. Right. Like, I got to think, um, this is a Nazi built thing. What are you talking mm-hmm. about? Um, wow. yeah, my, and then <laughs> that we got to Disney World. This is so long ago. And it, but even back then, mm-hmm. it was like some ridiculous amount. Mm-hmm. And there's seven of us plus my mom and dad. The, just to get in the door was like fucking bazillion dollars. And my dad's like, now here's another reason he's a bastard. There's not going to be any poor kids to get to come in here. Are there? No, there's not. And then you got those. That's when you had like the A, B, C, D and E ride tickets. E were the best. A, B were terrible. The antique cars and shit. But then you'd run out of good tickets. Mr. Toad's wild ride. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe I didn't have the best introduction to Disney World because... Well, then we could, then this was so funny because my younger sister was probably like, uh, six. And all she wanted to do, whose castle is it? Snow White's or Cinderella's? Did you have a childhood? No, I didn't. Me and my, no, I watched Hogan's Heroes. What? Cinderella. It's Cinderella's? Yes. I think it. I promise. You promise? Mm -hmm. Well, you could. Snow White had a cottage. She had a cottage. Full of dwarves. I, okay, I remember that part. So Cinderella, anyway. No, I never did like this shit. Even as a kid, I was like, can we turn on an animal program or something that's real? I don't I don't like animation. But anyway, the the Kate, my younger sister, Cinderella's castle, mm-hmm. and it was something to see. The one in Disney World is crazy, like, holy shit. It's amazing. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. And there's a restaurant in there. It's supposed to be a family restaurant. And you have to pay, this is at the time, I don't even know if it's still like this, you're, you're, basically you got a meet and greet with Cinderella if you spent enough money. Right. Yeah, it was a trick. Mm-hmm. And so, well. It's capitalism. It, it's <laughs> capitalism, but it's a trick to customers. We've already spent enough to get in this place. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to eat. And there's nine of us. And then <laughs> Cinderella did not, wasn't coming towards our table And my sister had a meltdown. And she's like, (laughs) literally like almost rolling on the ground going, I don't want to do this. And my dad goes, does this look fun? Is is this fun? Who's fun? There's all kinds of kids throwing fits too because Cinderella's way over there. And she's not coming over here. They should have had like five Cinderella's. Kids don't know. Yeah. And and then 
my dad's like, we waited forever, and we ate, and then we, he was still waiting, and he's like, I think we're just going to have to leave. And then the meltdown of all mother meltdowns. My sister lost her shit. and was like, oh, we came all the way from Missouri. I want to be Missouri. <laughs> we were in this restaurant so goddamn long. I mean, I, you could have gotten re-hungry. We were there that long. Yeah. It just, none of it seemed very child friendly from that perspective like you're you're charging way 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 crazy money you know you want to meet cinderella and then the mickey mouse meet and greet was bullshit because they send you through this house mickey's house and you always think you're right around the corner mickey you don't even know you just because you walked in you can't see how long the line is. That's part of their trick, too. That's the one out here where I took my nephews, and I was like, oh, my God, I wanted to kill him for a meet and greet with Mickey. It was We were in this fucked-up house for, like, two hours. The kids don't care anymore. Anyway, some people, <laughs> as I was saying, enjoy the Disney experience. Maybe I need to go with someone who, first of all, doesn't tell me Walt Disney's a Nazi before I go in. And second of all, knows the, the the ropes and what I did like some of the rides. There's no alcohol. Well, that's another problem. There's no alcohol. I used to do a joke in my act about it. I'm like, well, something about I don't remember. You say this is the happiest place on earth. Not if there's no alcohol. It's not even a close second. Oh, and then what, the one in California, the lady said to me, you know, I've got, I've got nephews and they're like little boys and she's like well you can go have a drink at the hilton over at california land i'm like do you think i'm that much of a drunk <laughs> hey kids we're leaving the place you wanted to go because aunt cat needs a drink a over at the hilton <laughs> well how am i going to get to the hilton from here i don't even know where i flip and park the car okay this is what's going to happen oh i'll shut up about this. <laughs> disney plans resort like residential community with a quote special brand of magic Bing! <laughs> Entertainment and media giant Disney has announced to start building mixed-use residential communities in the United States. It's going to be a whole kingdom of adults. The Walt Disney Company revealed plans for its... This is what it's called. Story Living Residential Development oh. in California's Coachella Valley. So they're putting it in the desert. The <laughs> oh, the Coachella the children. children. Yeah. That is not the idea of Disney. Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm -mm. That's where the brand's late founder, Walt Disney, owned a home. Named, by the way, too, he accidentally, I, I think if you read the story, killed his own mother, and that's why in all the Disney movies, the mother's yeah, died. Yeah, there was a gas leak. There's a book about that. And yeah. Mm -hmm. At least that's what I heard. For those who read. Now I sound like some other comedians doing podcasts where I'm just <laughs> spitting shit. <laughs> But at least mine doesn't isn't harmful. Um, named Cotina, the residential complex will include 1,900 housing units, which will be designed in a resort-like small town style that will take cues from Disney's famed theme parks. Oh my, god. oh, my God. Basically, now you're describing the villages, but everybody's in a Mickey outfit, which oh is even god. crazier. According to the company... Catino's homes will vary from standalone family homes to estates and condominiums and will be arranged around a 24-acre central lake described as a grand oasis. Ugh. Well, you know, it's fake. There's no lake, so it's going to be a weird color. Weird color. No fishing. No, no fish will live in, live in that. No. I bet they have paddle boats, probably Disney creatures <laughs> as paddle boats. The best, the best ones of all, the best paddle boats in the whole entire country are are in Baltimore in the harbor, and they're Loch Ness monsters. And there's purple ones, and there's green ones. I get so excited to go down to the harbor every time I'm in Baltimore. I don't even care if it's raining. I'm renting one. I am going out. Okay. <laughs> and I always try to get the green because although I like looking at the purple, I don't feel that it's realistic enough. Um, this, as well as providing expansive residential areas, they will have a town center. So, so does the villagers, just saying. With a range of shopping, dining, and other ex entertainment experiences. All facilities will be staffed by Disney cast members. That's creepy. I know. The theatrical term for Disney theme park employees that was originally coined by Walt Disney. Experiences at Katina will include programs centered on wellness, cookery. So That's ridiculous. So if you go to a cook 
cooking class. They're they're dressed like Disney characters. Uh-huh. Mick, Mickey and Pinocchio will teach you how to fry an egg. Oh my god! Yeah. Come on. I would have to like I don't even understand yet how to eat <laughs> edibles <laughs> properly, but I would have to eat all the edibles to not think too hard about any of that. Yeah. Um. Oh, they're gonna have live performances. Maybe I can get booked. Does that include comedians? Like the villages it was a lovely theater. A professionally managed beach park, beach park attached to the lake will provide recreational water activities. Uh, oh my God! It's open to the public through the purchase of a day pass, and there's also plans to build a beachfront hotel. Disney, first of all, there's no beaches in the desert, and you've had enough problem with your beachfront because the child got eaten by the alligator. <laughs> and then people can stay on that. Exactly. Take your old cruise ships. The project will be developed by Arizona-based DMB Development in collaboration with Walt Disney Engineering, the creative arm of the Walt Disney Company that is responsible for the construction in its theme parks worldwide. They describe, they describe it as vibrant new neighborhoods. It will be infused with the company's special brand of magic. Cotino is named after Continuous Cogria, the name for a European smoke tree plant, that re- references Smoke Tree Ranch, where Walt Disney had a house in nearby Hot Palm Springs. That's way too complicated. While most of the development will be um, open to owners of, of all ages, it will feature a section reserved specifically for residents over the age of 55. Come on. Sounds like the villages to me. Really They've just ripped off his idea. Really Disney's it. also planning a number of other story, time develop- story living developments in other parts of the United, Sp- United States, spanning entertainment, theme parks, and other co- consumer products. The Walt Disney Company was founded in 1923 and is headquartered in Burbank, California. Huh. Here's another tip. If you're gonna, if you're thinking about Disney World or Disneyland, Disneyland is the one in California. Uh-huh. I have had to, well, I had to go to the one in California. The one in Florida, in my humble opinion, is so much better Go if you want to go to both. Go to the one in California first. Then you won't want to go. Then, well, no, no. I'm saying if you go to the one in Florida, you're never going to want to go to the one in California because it just doesn't compare in every single thing about it. Um. All right. (laughs) This one's too hard right now. No. Let me see where I'm at. No, it's too hard. Too hard. It's too hard for even me. I have to go reread and reread and dumb it down. Because that's the point of this podcast. I'm here to do the work of the Lord and make things not hard. And they have figured out the two men that, who are behind Q. Oh and they God. did it through yeah. linguistic detectives. <gasps> no yeah. Okay, yeah. But I have to read it more because it's very difficult to understand. Wow. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. This is kind of crazy. <laughs> wow. I've talked about taking my nieces to the dollar store. And they have like six or seven dollars each right. and it then if if you it takes seven days because and cat how much not anymore they can do their own math right. now but at the time they couldn't how much is this everything is a dollar everything is a dollar i can't repeat okay so i have five things how many dollars do i have left you have two <laughs> but but then it, then you know but ah uh, well maybe i don't want this i mean the thing is i had to remember <laughs> they were having fun but I never let them buy food. Oh. Uh-uh. I said, no, we're not. Uh, I don't. No candy. I mean, they can have candy anywhere else, but I don't trust those giant things. And it's not like I'm some sort of soothsayer. It's just pretty obvious. Yeah. The stupid toy is fine. I would get cleaning stuff in there. Paper. They have the good boat cleaner, wrapping paper. Yeah, that kind of crap. The kids just like the toys. but And then they would... There's a boat cleaner in there that's super awesome. I can't think of the name of it right now. It's not. It's really for toilets. No. Mm-hmm. Cool. Somebody uh-huh. told me about it. Okay. Check this out. <laughs> this is terrifying. This is Rat infestation leads to various recalls and temporary closures of 404 Family Dollar stores. Come on. Family Dollar also owns Dollar Tree. I, and I don't even know when the, the kids, I never know which one I'm at. Am I at Dollar General or Dollar Tree or, I think General, but I don't think that one's associated with, this is so gross. <laughs> Family Dollars issued a voluntary recall of various products and temporarily closed stores across six states as the d- discount retailer works to recover from a massive rodent infestation at one of its distribution centers. 
Yep. They found the present presence of rodents and rodent activity throughout a family dollar distribution center in West Memphis, Arkansas during a January inspection that was prompt that was prompted by a consumer complaint. Oh my god. I know. Oh my god. Conditions oh. observed during the inspection includes included live rodents, dead rodents in various states of decay, rodent feces and urine, evidence of gnawing, nesting, and rodent outdoors oh. throughout the facility, dead birds and bird droppings, oh and products God. stored in conditions that did not protect against contamination. Oh. Oh. Here's products regulated by the oh. FDA. These are sold, These were all sold at stores in Alabama, Arkansas, Louisiana, Missouri, Mississippi, and Tennessee were affected by the recall. In, including all drugs, medical devices, cosmetics, dietary supplements, and human and animal pet food. Oh, I never thought about the pet food. Sold between oh. January 21 and February of 2022. Oh, my God. Right. Oh, God. Oh, they've temporarily closed the stores affected. Families rely on family dollars for such as food and medicine. I've bought cold medicine there. I never thought anything about it. No one should be subjected to products in this some kind of on un- the un- un- right. There are five. Uh, oh, this is because this is a New York family dollar, which is owned by the retailer, uh, the retail giant Dollar Tree, is notifying all of its affected stores. I mean, I can't. Anytime it's a giant warehouse thing, I don't know. It just seems like. Yeah. I saw the pictures online too. I didn't even mean to, it's gross. but I did see them. Um, this is just a little. Um, I don't know why these pop up. Probably because I Google UFOs too often. Uh-huh. Probably. Probably. Um, American Airlines pilot, American Airlines pilot's harrowing UFO report to the FBI was so detailed it shook experts. Uh-huh. Now, here's the thing. Okay. We seem to be having a lot more of these sightings and stuff. I think because people have phones and they can do it themselves and we're getting more... But if there are really aliens, which I do think there are other species of things out there, yeah. um, I don't know why they're not stopping. Why are they just flying around us right. and not landing? Right. Unless they think we're too stupid or we're beyond help. Maybe. <laughs> because there's no way they're afraid of us. If you got here in your little tic-tac thing that flies 70,000 directions and speeds that are f- things we don't even understand, they're way smarter than us. Mm-hmm. So... And maybe it's not a UFO. You know, I'm not one of those people that says everything is a UFO. God knows what it could be. I mean, it could be some sort of weapon that's being, or or one of Elon Musk's bullshit things. Exactly one year ago today, UFO experts were buzzing about reports of a pilot who claimed he saw a long um, uh, cylinder-type object flying over New Mexico. It's what they call now the Tic Tacs. It looks like um, an actual Tic Tac. American Airlines and the FBI confirm reports that flight American Airlines 2292, which was traveling between Cincinnati and Phoenix on February 21, 2021, had a near miss with an unidentifying fly object shortly before, before uh, 20 past 1. The pilot contacted Albuquerque uh, Air Traffic Control to request information on the bizarre sightings and was as heard if they asking if they had, quote, targets up in the air. In the audio clip radio transmission, he added, we just had something go over the top of this. I hate to say it, but it looked like a long cylinder type object that looked like a cruise missile type of thing moving really fast right over the top of us. That would freak me out if yeah. I'm in the pilot. Sure. Um, while American Airlines initially played down report, the report, a company spokesman confirmed the incident in a statement that said, following a debriefing with our flight crew, and they have a picture kind of of it, like he had it in its sights for a minute. Um Additional uh, information we received can confirm this radio transmission was from American Airlines Flight 2292, blah, blah, blah. Um, the FAA administration uh, said that their air traffic, uh, air traffic controllers did not see any object in the area on their radar. Okay. So whatever this thing is doesn't appear on our radar. Oh, wow. Right. But the sighting quickly became the most uh, significant UFO sightings of 2020. It was several, one of several triggers that saw experts push for more transparency from the U.S. government about investigations into alien life. Mm-hmm. One pilot said the airline bosses are so hostile to ET claims that a colleague was told to get counseling after reporting a UFO. 
Yeah, that's the other problem. If you start saying that shit, then they're like, hmm, I think right. Kathleen's going a little cuckoo town. <laughs> but I don't think pilots are the type that would do that. No, I don't either. No, it's not like they're up there drinking, making shit up. <laughs> that we know of. When someone yeah. says UFO, everyone thinks they're referring to aliens, but it's not always the case, especially with the CERN. Right, it could be a drone. It could be, but when things fly like that, I don't, I don't know. But if they are, if there's people in there piloting those, I don't know why they don't ever land or crash or and then you get into the whole area of 51 thing. I don't know. <laughs> Many airline pilots, self-included and military pilots have encountered, uh, have encounters at altitude with UFOs over many decades before the internet. Encounters are reported, uh, reported inter- internally and amongst colleagues and seldom, seldom reach the media. When you're fortunate enough to have as a close witness, it's quite really quite serious stuff. There are advantage, there are advantages in having an office window at 37,000 square feet. well, I might have to go in. Yeah. I'd be so scared. I don't want to get on. You know, I'm, I'm going to do a night flight for American, and I, I know that thing's out there. Right. Yeah, good show. Yeah. But as we've established through this podcast, I'd quit a lot of things. <laughs> um, this is, we're going to leave you guys before the quote with a little little um, story that's true, okay. and then a little um, folklore Irish, Scottish folklore, because this story is directly attached to it, and this is why I believe in the Selkies. Oh. Yep. California man survives frigid five-hour night swim with a friendly seal. Now, what's weird is my grandma used to tell five me... Five hours? Five hours. Wow. In frigid water. My grandma used to tell me that seals, some seals were your um, dead relatives, right. and they are just popping back up to say Hello. So, like in Ireland, uh, at the Blasket Islands, are these places where there's just seals everywhere, and they actually follow you and play with you. And they, I mean, they go up and down. They're looking at you, though. It's like hide and go seek. You can tell they're actively engaged with you. That uh, somehow seals have always been. And then there's a movie, The Secret of Rowan Inish, which is absolutely adorable, and it makes you believe. They are. Well, it makes people like me that are susceptible to these types of ideas. <laughs> um, <laughs> highly, highly susceptible. Highly. Scott Thompson. <laughs> Guess who? That's Carrot Top's real name. This is not Carrot Top. This is definitely not Carrot Top. It could be. It's not him. <laughs> he wouldn't be in water that cold. Yeah. He goes in Florida lakes with alligators. Right. The real, sure. the others got them. Huh. Scott, to, Scott Thompson fell into the Santa Barbara Channel and survived a five-hour swim with the help of his seal. California, the California man thought he would die when he fell off his fishing boat into the frigid Pacific o- Ocean. Which, by the way, the Pacific Ocean's always fucking cold. Yeah. Except maybe the last week in August and the first week in September. Mm-hmm. All those movies we were shown as Midwest people, like where people are just in shorts and on surfboards. Right. Maybe San Diego. Sure. But even in L.A., the water can get... It's colder than you think. It's, too cold. it's colder than I was told. Poor for my arrival. <laughs> um... Uh, but a friendly harbor seal showed up in the nick of time and helped him get to safety. Scott Thomas, a sea urchin diver, blamed a lapse in judgment for the mishap that sent him falling off his boat into the Santa Barbara Channel in the middle of the night last month. How terrifying. Very. Oh, my God. Just terrifying. I thought to myself, great, this is how I'm going to die. Today is the day I'm going to die. Thompson, who was wearing nothing but his shorts and T-shirt at the time. That's it. No wetsuit. Wow. Well, why would he have one of you? I don't know. Thompson said he left the boat's motor running and it quickly got away from him. That's when I realized, okay, we got problems. And I just started swimming as hard as I could towards the boat, and it really didn't take too long to realize it's getting further. I'm not getting closer. Thompson said and that's when he began to fear for his life. The panic set in. It was like, wow, this is a pretty heavy situation, adding that he had kept telling himself to keep swimming. While in survival mode, he said he kept repeating, you got to get home to your family. You got to get home to your family. I was, I was devastating myself. Through my mind, just picturing my girls and my son growing up oh. without me and my wife, you know, not having a husband to support her. But uh, he said all of a sudden he heard a big splash, which he assumed was a shark, as if you're not scared yeah. enough. Yeah. Fuck, he said with a, when I heard the splash, my heart jumped out of my chest and I was like, fuck, a shark. He said he recalled in a lengthy post on Peter McGuire's blog, Sour Milk, just then a little seal popped its head out of the water next to me and looked at me like, dude, what are you doing here? With no one else for Thompson to turn to, the seal became his best buddy. He was like my dog. Come here, little buddy, I said. He'd bob up and down looking at me. Then he'd disappear, pop back up and look at me, Thompson recounted. He said the little pup 
bumped into him several times in the butt to as if to prod him on. He was like telling me, get your ass in gear. I was starting to run out of things to say to him, so I sang him some Grateful Dead songs. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> totally my friend Dorf. Dorf would totally do this. It's probably the only song that Dorf knows. And, and I told him the same corny dad jokes that I tell my kids. Buoyed by the cheering creature, Thompson felt determined to swim to an oil platform, which he reached after five hours. Wow. I, I can't swim that long. No. No way. No. And he does not look particularly ripped, this guy. <laughs> I mean, maybe fear can make you. It started getting brighter, and I'm crying, and I'm shouting at this guy. Crew members on the rig provided first aid before the Coast Guard got him to a hospital where he was treated for hypothermia. Even putting on a wetsuit, being prepared, getting in that water and swimming to the platform was horrendous. Paul, uh, somebody of the thing said, I can't imagine being in the water with shorts and a t-shirt at night. There was no moon. I mean, it was pitch black. In his Thompson, in his post, Thompson wrote, I'm a believer that there's a higher power now. Yes, it's the seal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, okay, whatever it is, Tim. I don't know what it was, but there's a power greater in me. That was shown to me, and I will never doubt that for the rest of my life. It's a great story. Great. So th this is the legend of the Selkies. Why not? This pubcast is allowed to do legends, folklore, oh, right? Sure, why not? But you'll never look at seals the same way again. No. I, did, I haven't. But my grandma told me all kinds of crazy Irish things. that they, Once you hear them, you just can't get them out of your head. They're just there, right? Mm -hmm. The seal people are said to be cursed with a constant longing for what they do not have. They, when they are swimming in the water as seals, they yearn to be on land. And when they walk on... Uh, with two, on two legs as a human, they long to be in, be in the sea. They can transform from one creature to another by shedding their seal skin and alternatively putting it on again. Oh. See, I didn't understand. My no, my grandma never told me they were unhappy. Yeah, she no, just no. said they had the ability to be people, yeah. like in a seal costume, not yeah. outfit, whatever. Right. Uh, yeah. Exterior. That, yeah, that yeah. there are a lot more. And as a kid, it's a fascinating story. There's one ancient Celtic story feeling Neil Mac featuring Neil Mac Codrum, a Scottish fisherman. He was traveling along the coast when he spotted a group of nude women dancing under the moon. When he stepped on a piece of driftwood, he, he alerted his presence to the woman who ran over into a pile of furs, slipped them on, and dove into the sea. <gasps> they were seal women. However, Neil was able to grab the last sister's seal skin before she could put it back on. They can't get back in if you steal their skin, their fur. Yeah, well, they can't survive too cold although she pleaded with him to give it back neil knew about the selkies from old tales and he refused he hid her seal skin and the woman was forced to stay and become his wife what? yeah Come on. it's a it's a, it's a legend mm -hmm. i'm not saying it really happened it wasn't on cnn <laughs> or fox or something at the time after uh, some time she gave neil a son and a daughter both sporting webs between their fingers and toes <gasps> as they grew older they grew older as the sulky women grew more wistful. She thought she was a good and obedient wife. One day her children came running to her with a piece of fur, excited to show her what they'd found. The mother was so overjoyed to have her seal skin back. She told her children about the selkie race and, and then warned them that she had to leave them that very night. After Neil had fallen asleep, the selkie woman took her seal skin to the water's edge. She bid her, ch bid her children farewell, and she told them that she would be able to hear, uh, they would be able to hear her singing from time to time as they were half selkie themselves. Right? Oh. See, the halves are the one that I was taught about. Then, then she slipped into the water, and the children headed home. In the morning, Neil was saddened to hear his children tell him that their mother had returned to the sea. He missed her very much, but the children kept him company for the rest of his life, except for nights when their mother's song came, called to them to come to her and swim through the waves. There are many Celtic legends of children being born with webbed fingers and toes, but none so famous as Mac Codrum's siblings. And then if you want to see The Secret of Rowan Anish, I think you can do I think it's on Amazon, Amazon. or something. It's a 1990, 1994 movie about a young girl who goes to live with her grandparents in Donegal, Ireland, many years before her brother had been carried out to sea in a cradle, and one of her relatives believed that he's being watched over by the seals. Oh. Yeah. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. It's an enchanting tale. I'd say it's probably better than Storks. <laughs> <laughs> Inspired by the gen uh, gentlest of the fantastical creatures in Celtic mythology. That's cool. uh, some of the legends say that Selkies can only transform from a seal to a human once a year on Midsummer's Eve. Others insist it's every ninth night. The seal people once upon the shore were said to have danced in the moonlight. They're very gentle souls, contrasting with the usually hostile mythological creatures that come from the sea. 
and they were very beautiful. The women made very good wives, and the husbands, if the husbands could manage to hide their seal skins, the male seal people had the power to seduce human women, especially those that were unhappy in their marriage. There you have it, people. That's what I, that's what I, that's what I, oh, that was loud, sorry. Sorry. That's very romantic. Isn't it? Yeah. It's nice. I like it. Just um, sometimes I agree with Stevie. You just need to step out of reality. I'm going to go watch Storks. I'm going to leave you with this quote from what? The magazine that Lewis keeps sending me. Um, oh, no. This one is kind of, I don't get it. James Baldwin quoted in the New York Times. You think your pain and your heartbreak are unprecedented in the history of the world, but then you read. I like this one. Publisher Robert Bernstein quoted in Forbes, only intuition can protect you from the most dangerous individuals all, of all time, the articulate and competent. <laughs> I like it. I agree. I like okay, termites, that's it. Um, I always tell you the shows, you know the shows, go to the website, St. Louis, oh, well, St. Louis be done by the time I, no, no that won't St. be done. Let's sold out. Are you, are you excited about St. Louis? I'm very excited about St. Louis. I'm most excited to get an Emo's pizza. <sighs> Emo's is a pizza only available in St. Louis. You either love it or you hate it. I love it. And whenever there's a when there's a performer in St. Louis that I like or that I've met or that I'm friends with, I send them 20 Emo's pizzas backstage. That would include Mr. Ron White, Miss Anita Baker. Yep. And I know exactly how to get it backstage, which is not uh, the simplest of tasks. <laughs> no, no, to tell a delivery, one of the children, mm -hmm. you know, hey, can you go um, through this alley, take a left, and then bang on this door really loudly. Look for the tour bus. Yeah, look for the tour bus. Um, all right. So, Charlottesville. Charlottesville um, where? Virginia Beach. Somebody said, will you come to San Antonio? I was just there. I don't know how. Sometimes we, there's just miscommunications. Virginia Beach. Yeah. Mm hmm. Augusta. Well, I have there. plans for Augusta. This lady told me where to go, and I'm going to all of them. Excellent. Um, Charleston, Atlanta. Charleston. I love the Charleston. Atlanta's always fun. Portland. That's a huge place, the Cobb Energy Center. Mm -hmm. Atlanta termites, are you listening? Do you like it there at the Cobb Energy Center? Do you feel energy? I don't know. <laughs> I've never worked in it. I worked at the Bucket Theater, and I really liked that. But I don't, I don't have choices in these things, really. It's just you move on and you move here, and this one's bigger, but I don't know if it's any better. Okay. Atlanta Termites hit me up on that. Okay. Where's your favorite place to see a show? Stand-up. Um, whoops, ow. Um, Seattle, D.C., New York. Seattle, D.C., New York. Yeah, we talked about those. Yeah. I'm very excited about Town Hall in New York. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about all those dates. The Warner's going to be fun. The Warner Theater is always great. Mm -hmm. Um. Council Bluffs, Iowa is a casino, and if you're going to see two turtles, I assume by the name of Jack and Vicky, powering up that <laughs> town car and heading straight on up there, they Very love a casino easy, gig, sir. mainly just because they get the free room, mm -hmm. that I give them the free room, and then they know there's secret cash here. If they go broke, mm -hmm. they can come over and hit me, and then they hit me up individually, and they don't know that the other one just did it. Right. I'm like, just here's money. Go, you don't need to come up and go, your mother doesn't need to know this, but um, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, she knows, know. she knows. Um, so that's everywhere. And then we haven't even talked about, maybe I'll save it for next week. What? My show in June with Sean Cassidy. Oh, I think we should talk about it. <gasps> All right, I'll do this quickly. Nope, I'll save it for next week. Why? Because it's a good story and it's kind of long. So, okay. um. But I swear to God, in Salina, Kansas, I will be appearing with Sean Cassidy. I can't wait. Uh, yeah. I'm coming. Uh, there's a lot of people my age that want to come. Like, friends, they can't believe it. Like, I've done, I've done this for 33 years. I've done crazy things. Mm -hmm. But this is the strangest in a crazy way of life just coming in a full circle and being, um, I don't know, just weird things. Like, strange things. Henry Winkler, Fonzie, a.k.a. Fonzie, tweeted something about one of my jokes. And I have met him through a Comedy Central project, and he's the nicest man in the world. And he has a voice like this. And you forget that he's Fonzie, right. which is hard to do mm -hmm. when that's the show I watched every Tuesday night as a kid for whatever many years. You just think, 
but he erases all that. He's probably the kindest man I've ever met. Really? Yeah. And his voice, I said, you should do those stop smoking cessation things. Like, uh-huh. his voice is like that. But to think, <laughs> I mean, to think like, oh, my God, like I was on shag carpet every, shag carpeting every Tuesday waiting for happy days. And I just, my, I had a poster of him on a motorcycle. And I believe he had a monkey on his back. I don't know why. A monkey? A, like a ch- little tiny chimp. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so weird things happen through this job, which are awesome. I would have never thought in my whole life I would ever get to talk to Fonzie. No, I wouldn't either. And I'm sure he's sick of Fonzie, but he's very polite about that too. Mm. It's like I went to go see Linda Carter sing one time for this show thing, and she actually came out and did the Wonder Woman twirl. And it's so great when somebody just embraces what the real reason you're here. Right. You're here because you're fucking Wonder Woman. Okay, let's not act like you're not Wonder Woman. And shoot, that was not that long ago. Maybe eight years ago, and still stunningly beautiful. She came out to talk to people that were sitting at a table across from me and my friend Bob. I mean, stunning. Like, you can't stop looking at her. Like, And I did prefer The Bionic Woman as a TV show uh-huh. over Wonder Woman because I'm a more practical person. And The Bionic Woman seemed actually possible. Wonder Woman, eh, too fantastical. But she's so, to this day, still so pretty. You cannot stop looking at her. Like, her eyes are like, Stunning. they, like st- she's probably a selkie. She, probably oh, a, she might be half seal. Yeah. Oh. They say they have emerald blue and emerald green eyes, the selkie seals. Not all seals are selkies. I really got to think about that. Well, that's why on the beach you got to look for the ones with the blue and green eyes. Wow. Mm-hmm. I feel the same way Wayne Gretzky tweeted me. If Wayne Gretzky tweeted you? I'd freak out. Yeah. Yeah. The great one. He's not that hard to find. Hey, we could track is. him down if we if you wanted to meet him. Really? Well, I don't see why not. <laughs> right? Why'd you look away when you said that? Well, because I would just have to call <laughs> my friend Dorf, who's a hockey creature, and then he could oh. find out, or through golf, because he's Dustin Johnson's father-in-law. Pappy-in-law. Mm-hmm. He's wonderful. Dustin Johnson is the father of the baby, the grand baby, baby the grand baby Gretzky. <laughs> And Dustin's a, Dustin Johnson's very athletic. Maybe that kid will be the next great coming for hockey if he chooses hockey. Or but he's American, so he probably won't. Well, he's not Canadian. I know. But his grandfather... And I think they live in Florida. That doesn't lend itself to a hockey culture either. Tell the Tampa Bay Lightning. <laughs> yes, the Tampa Bay Lightning. And how many of them are Canadian and Russian? Probably... Uh, 70% except Pat Maroon, Your who's from St. Louis, my boyfriend, yes. Pat Maroon. I'm the only one with the Pat Maroon blue shirt. Yep. Now I didn't even play for the blues. Whatever. <laughs> All right, termites. Um, enough sports talk. <laughs> enough sports talk. We'll talk about Phil Mickelson next week, just a little bit. I know a lot of people don't know a lot about golf, but um, I'll catch you up. I'll dumb it down because it's one of the, the most holy shit moments of any person who's made it to that level of a career to implode it, implode it in a week, Pfft. yeah, in two days. Right. I think he can weasel his way back, but boy, is it going to be hard. Guess who would never do that? Hmm. Guess who would never do that? Guess who would never do that? Gretzky, Gretzky. Yeah. or my favorite golfer, Raymond Floyd. No, he Raymond's there. probably eighty now. He's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> or. Chichi Rodriguez. You don't see Chichi doing that shit. No. Chichi went back to Puerto Rico. Yep. The most handsome golfer ever, Chichi mm-hmm. Rodriguez. True. The most flair, Chichi Rodriguez. Yeah. Best dressed, Chichi Rodriguez. Mm-hmm. Somebody put some most personality. Chichi. Chichi. Yeah. When he would do his sword with his putter and then whoosh, yeah. put it back in his thing. Cheer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, termites, don't forget. There's t shirts. Here, I'll show you one more time. So her, you gotta get them for St. Pat's Day. We'll post them. I mean, they're good we'll for post, all summer. We'll post them but, them um, so follow Kathleen on official socials. And I need the chubby, chubby termites. Don't let me down. Because hey, it costs. Follow, follow your official socials. Follow my official social media. Yeah. yeah. We're all not right. Re- we're not reordering those. We are not reordering these because, well, maybe for next St. Pat's Day. Right. But they're not just for St. Patrick's Day. You're always a thirsty termite. You're always. <laughs> I'm always a thirsty termite. I have already had a year and a half throughout this broadcast. Mm-hmm. All right. Be 
hopeful termites, thirsty termites, winter is almost over. Thank God. I'm so sick of it being cold. It's March. It's March, but it's still flipping cold. It's 32 degrees out there. Yeah, St. Patrick's Day is coming, but it needs to be a lot warmer. And it needs to do it quickly. All right, termites, that's all I got for you. Ready?